So we will get this caucus started. I apologize uh, for the delay. We had an executive session uh, before this that I'll announce at the beginning of the meeting. But in terms of uh, our ARPA plan, that's what the subject of this caucus is about tonight. So the floor is yours. Good evening and thank you for having us here this evening. On behalf of Anzer Advisory, we're pleased to present an update and since the last time we were here. Uh, one of the one of our colleagues you can see up here on the bottom left hand screen was uh, stuck in Texas because of storm, so he wasn't able to make the trip today. He's here and we'll reach pipe him when, when needed. Uh, I'm Dave Jahoski. This is Desi Navarro, Corey Burbox up on the screen. If you could refer, I'm just going to skip right to um, the third slide of the of the presentation, the objective. And really, if we think about this, it's you know providing an overview um, of the proposed spending plan and to obtain council feedback. Uh, what we've handed out to you is a copy of today's presentation, as well as the compliance report that we will touch on a little bit later as part of this presentation. But really, the 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 main focus of, of what we're here today, if, if we slip to the next slide, is really we, we wanted to kind of recap some things that have happened since the last time we were here. I think we were here at the end of March, I think it was March 29th. Um, during that time period, the budget challenge was still open. Uh, we had presented some of the, uh, I call it the conceptual framework and some of the ideas and the categories of where um, we were looking to identify programs and, and really kind of helping to develop the overall program. Since then, um, we have received the results of the budget challenge, which Desi is going to talk about. Uh, we have finalized the, the draft proposed spending plan uh, and the report for which you have a copy of. And, and really what we want to do is we want to use this as a, as a launch pad into talking about um, the spending plan itself as well as some of the results. And, and really at this point, I'm going to pass it over to Desi to kind of have him walk you through um, the spending plan and, and the budget challenge at this point. Thanks, Dave. Yep. All right. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Very good. So like Dave mentioned, last time we were here, uh, the budget challenge was still open. It was open for the majority of the month of, uh, of March. Closed on April 4th, and the result of that bu budget challenge was over 100 survey responses. And if you guys recall, the question was to community, if you had $100 uh, to allocate to the different ARPA programs, how would you allocate that? So up on the screen, what you'll see is the findings of that budget challenge and how that compares to the current proposed allocation that the city has developed and come up with. Community on the left, city on the right. So you'll see quickly there's a good third uh, when you look at uh, the city asset reinvestments, economic recovery, housing, green infrastructure that were almost in direct alignment with what the community uh, was looking for. Same thing, you'll see a 20% uh, green piece of the pie as well, that streets and business corridor, that was also directly aligned as well, um, which is great. Uh, so, so really good on, on that front. Uh, areas where we saw there might be opportunities for some future alignment would be in stormwater, parks and rec, and public health and education. And actually, since the results of the budget challenge, uh, the city team that's been working uh, diligently on this ARPA program has, has even allocated a few more dollars to that parks and rec uh, bucket. And I think, you know, we'll continue to look for opportunities to do that. Stormwater is, is one of those types of projects where, you know, there's a lot of costs that go into it from feasibility, design, construction, all the way through closeout. And we know the market's still doing funny things, and it's probably going to be doing funny things here for a while. So once those projects get fully designed, defined, and bid out, you know that there might be an opportunity there to then assess that and, and potentially reallocate some funds from that bucket to a few of those others that we talked about. So overall, I think the budget challenge was great. It was a success, and I think there was some really good uh, findings there um, to consider. So. This next slide is the spending plan overview. So at this point, <clears throat> this is the proposed breakdown. Um, on the right-hand side there, you'll see by ARPA category one, two, five, six, and seven, um, the overall proposed amount for each one of those categories. And then the subsets uh, underneath each one of those categories uh, show the, the city's programs that they've developed. So you'll see you know, the, the negative economic impacts um, category right now has the most funding allocated, but it also has the most subset categories within it as well. So 
A couple of the big hitters in there are the streets and business corridors. Uh, there are a couple opportunities for some notices of funding awards, which we're going to talk about on the next slide as well. Um, but I think a really good spread and a really good mix here uh, between all the different programs and, and what we saw come back from the budget challenge as well from community. So this next slide here is a summary of the notices of funding award and the proposed breakdown there. So of the total 68.7 million, currently the, out, the allocation to those programs would be about 14.2. And when we say notice of the funding award, you know, these would be those programs that would open up to um, the application process, seeking applications that, that'll then be evaluated and, and determine, you know, level of funding. But right now, the, the big buckets of funding there are for public health and education, housing, and economic recovery. And just a couple of quick highlights in there. You know, un, under housing, there's a home buyer program. It sounds like there's, there's in the framework right now in the city that currently exists, but here's an opportunity uh, with ARPA dollars with a little bit more flexibility that came out in the final rule to kind of expand that framework and really help those folks that wouldn't have an opportunity to buy a home to, to give them an opportunity to now do that here in the, in the city of Scranton. Um, same, another quick highlight, the NEPA uh, Thrives program under the economic recovery bucket. You know, that's an opportunity to, to help with some workforce training for either the underemployed or the unemployed, get them back out into, uh, into the working market uh, and really kind of just help out individuals as much as possible and, and those, the, the residents here of Scranton. Sure, and, and I think uh, the last one here to highlight, and going fast again, just to kind of keep time in mind, but um, under the public health and education, there's an affordable child care program. Um, you know, there's, there's an existing, again, framework, I think that was established through the CARES Act, but now with uh, this, this ARPA funding as well, there's an opportunity to take the good that was being done there and really kind of expand that um, and broaden that to make affordable child care, child care more of a, a realistic thing for more folks here in the city. Sure, yeah. Uh, so as we've talked about with all of you in individual meetings, and I think we've, we've stated here in our, our public caucus before, the, we know that we can't use these funds to start programs we can't maintain. We don't wanna, we are not looking at this, and I know none of you are looking at this as uh, some windfall where we get to fund some program that there's no way the city could sustain over time. So with the NOFA proposals, you, you see the types of programs that we know we can fund our great community organizations out there and have these be, be programs that can sustain. If we fund a program now with a community organization or, you know, Desi mentioned NeighborWorks and some of the home buyer type of programs, entities like NeighborWorks can take those and run with them and potentially be able to find other funding and run with them on a sustained basis after 2026. But we wanna be careful and we're very happy to be working with all of you and have this public engagement because what we don't wanna do is start something that we are gonna to have to cut off in, in four years time. So the NOFAs really, we, we wanted to, to put a bunch of these on the page that we've talked about so that you can see the types of programs we're gonna be putting out. And we'll, for example, work with the school district on the NOFAs around education catch up. We don't wanna be putting out a notice of funding that isn't gonna do anything. So we'll try to work with the, the experts in the fields that we're trying to help uh, as we develop these programs. Very good. So this next slide here is just a quick summary on where we stand with compliance. So when we were here about a month ago, we had presented an initial heat map to show how the different projects and programs uh, populated themselves here on, on this risk project cost matrix. Um, a few updates since then. Um, you guys are still very much in the compliance uh, category, you know, lower, lower risk, moderate risk. We'll continue to update this as we work with city staff and, and you all, but right now there, there are no projects here that or programs that any, any one of us is saying uh, would not be a good use or eligible use of ARPA funding. Um, in addition to this heat map, which is very high level, you guys have a very detailed uh, report, which basically narrates the entire process, everything we've been doing with, with the city staff and then you all from uh, day one through where we are today, uh, just to kind of put that down in writing. And, and in that report, you'll also find by project, by program the specific risk scores for each if you're interested as, as well. Because dots on a page could obviously uh, not as easy to read sometimes. So, and then with that, I'm gonna kick it over to, to Dave here. So one of the things that- as Can I ask a quick question? <clears throat> I was looking here, all these acronyms, NOFA, what is that? 
Notice of funding availability. What is it? Notice of funding availability. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Thank you. I just couldn't. I had to ask the same question a couple months ago. Thank you. No problem. Notice of financial award. I'm sorry? Notice of financial award. So it's notice of funding availability. This is what we do with our action plan. So when we subgrant out of the action plan, we put out a notice and people then can apply for the funding. One thing we'll make sure is that in the, I believe in the report we have an acronyms listing because where I, where I live, the SCC means different things. I'm from Florida, so it means the <laughs> Southeastern Conference football. Where Desi's from in New York City, it takes on the you know, indication of the stock exchange. So uh, great question, great point. Um, one of the things- well, That's what I'm seeing on this page here. We have public health notice of financial award. So oh. I don't know if that, the, the money is awarded at this point, but you're saying it's just being put up Correct. for yeah, individuals noticed. to right. apply for. Pub yeah, made public so that folks will know that there's potential to apply for that funding and it'll be an application process that's then scored, ranked, and graded. Okay. And that would be for public health, education, economic recovery, those areas? Correct. So if you go to um, the, the slide following that, the one that's the uh, NOFA proposal slide, that'll show you all the different programs currently planned for at this point. Well, that's up on the screen. Um, okay, let's go to the next slide. So one of the things we just wanted to highlight here is that, you know, and this picture is to illustrate really the overall process. It's not proportional in terms of the timeline, in terms of phase one and phase two. Uh, but we're, we are getting close to the end of phase one, which was really the intent of this was to was to produce the deliverable that you have. It's also about setting the stage, which is phase two. Um, part of phase one, some of the major things that milestones that we have left to complete in phase one is the quarterly report, and that's due to the U.S. Treasury um, April 30th of this year, and then uh, the other other major, I think, event coming up is the commission meeting on May 10th. Part of what will happen after this point is once you've adopted and approved your spending plan, that's really for us, it's kind of an arbitrary distinction, but it's really we go from planning and concept to actually execution, and it, at that point you will work with, you know, getting out the notices of funding availability, working with the other specific vendors on the projects that you've selected, uh, and then there'll be processes that we will follow um, at that point. So that really where we are right now is we're kind of kind of finishing up phase one as we, as we you know, migrate into phase two. Um, our role is to help then take what you've adopted and, and execute against that plan. And really I think that finishes the, the prepared marks that we have. We want to be um, considerate of your time. I know that we're getting a little bit of a later start, but we wanted to make sure that if you had any questions, we left plenty of time for questions and answers. Okay, I have a question. Um, so on May 10th, obtain council approve, uh, approval on spending plan. Is that, you know, three, three votes, two votes? Um, that's two it's two readings we're expecting to get that for introduction next week next week okay and then, so final approval in seventh order would be May May 10th okay now one thing I see here is intergovernmental coordination in April of 22 it's uh, aligned with today April 26 but there's no date for April of 22 have you spoke with the county the school district the state and those conversations okay. have been ongoing the county officials a couple of weeks ago. I met with um, Larry and Weston. I met with uh, Pat Laffey last week um, to discuss their their plans, and will those will be those will be ongoing. Um, the state and and U.S. Department of I think it's missing a T there. Um, the U.S. Department of Transportation. So. Um, you know, Eileen I is in constant contact with the state on a range of, of our grant funding, um, so we continue to be engaged with 
them. I, Larry and I have had some meetings um, with the governor's office and obviously the legislative offices we're, we're all, all in touch with a daily basis. So we're in touch at the state level to try to maximize these funds, but also pairing, most importantly, I think pairing grant opportunities with these funds. Um, this, the U.S. Department of Transportation has done a really nice job of having consistent communication. Um, Senator Casey's office and Representative Cartwright's office have also done a great job of having lots of communication. We have a call um, to, on Thursday um, about the Infrastructure and Jobs Act with the Department of Transportation and Casey's office. So we're continuing to try to answer those questions that we, we can't answer yet. So for example, in the stormwater bucket, we don't know yet what all the other funding would be, so we're not ready to allocate specific projects with these funds because we don't want to spend money, a ARP money that we might be able to, to get funded through other mechanisms. So I, I think we've got a really nice coordination going on those levels. Um, and the, I'd say with the school district especially, the pro, the, their ARP funds are very different rules than the city's. So the pieces that, that they're working on really don't have a lot of overlap with what we are doing. Um, the county, however, staying in close touch with them is good because, for example, with broadband, um, they're, they're potentially going to do some broadband. The state also, federal also. There's, there's still a lot of questions around which levels of government are going to fund what with some of the, the money that's out there right now. But that's Mayor, do we know when the federal infrastructure funding is supposed to be released? It's or? staggered in terms of the program. So the um, uh, Council Member Donahue, you were on the call on Friday with Representative Cartwright, right? Um, so there will, on May 14th, Department of Transportation's uh, Federal Railway Agency, I think I'm getting FRA correct, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> the FRA, by, the, by statute, by, on May 14th, they have to establish their program and they will do a notific uh, expression of interest. So the, our entire region will be working with Amtrak really to, to determine how we express that interest to make sure that it's clear that our, our entire region wants this program and then there will be a, essentially an application process from there. So we, um, we, the call that, that we had on Friday um, was really helpful in kind of outlining what the, that next phase looks like. But the FRA phase of the IGA, IJA, IIJA is separate from the, some of those other pieces. The, the majority of the funding that we're going to see in Pennsylvania is running through PennDOT and PennVest. And so we're staying on top of what might be coming here, uh, working with the Pennsylvania Municipal League and keeping up on that. A lot of what will happen, though, is going to come through those entities. So we'll, we'll keep advocating for those dollars to come to Scranton, um, but it'll be those state entities that are following those timelines. So the infrastructure funds will likely address you said PennDOT, like maybe state roads, uh, bridges, Bri roads, things bridges, things like that, yeah. not necessarily stormwater? It remains to be seen what we might be able to do with stormwater there. So okay. uh, hopefully we'll be able to add to these dollars in some way. But Thank you. Unclear. So for an example, we, you talked about overlap. Um, with the broadband, you, I mean, the proposal is saying 3.2 million. I feel like I saw 3.4 at some point in time. You said there's some state... Uh, money that's going towards broadband as well as well as county money going towards broadband. Do we have any kind of um, idea what how much overlap there is and then give an example of what we would do with that money if we um, indeed did not have to use the whole 3.2. So the state uh, probably earlier this winter started a broadband authority is that right? That's correct. And then they just put uh, an individual in place as the executive director. So it's very new in the state. So I think we need to continue to communicate and get updates there, but we need, need to see what the state's going to do, I think, before we act locally on this particular right. piece is our, so our, our view. Early indication from the state would be they would address areas where there is no broadband first. And then work their way out from there. Um, we have talked to the county because the county has uh, suggested that broadband may be one of their initiatives as well. So that, I think that is probably our best point of coordination around that. Um, you know, and then we'll see what plays out with the state. 
I'm just using that as an example because each one of these pieces is going to be the same thing. I just thought maybe that was the easiest since you had already it's spoke most, to them about it. It's the most salient example where we would have a lot of overlap, I think, with county and state. I mean, aside from stormwater, probably. Um, so since these funds don't need to be obligated until December uh, 31st, 2024, um, this, whatever list you've kind of developed here um, can be adjusted um, accordingly based on the funding that comes from the infrastructure plan. So you'd probably be maybe a little hesitant to obligate those funds early, correct? Yeah. Because until you get a full sense of what we're going to be getting from the infrastructure funding. Right, right. And, but, I, but the timeline is very tight. Um, as Dave said, the, that is not representative. Phase two is far longer than phase one, but it's, it's going to come, those timelines for when we have to, to allocate the funds and when they have to be spent is going to come at us really fast. So um, to the extent that the broadband question, you know, if we're sitting here next year and we're still thinking about it, we probably need to reallocate those funds. Um, because we might not be, by, by mid-2023, it might be hard for us to get something going. So we'll have to, to keep, really keep at it and keep on it, which, you know, which is the reason that we, we need the support and we're happy for the support with our, our team here from ANSWER. And um, we'll be needing to figure out from, a, like, from our own internal standpoint what the, what the resources we're going to have internally um, should be. The other piece of it is process for the legislation that we plan to send to you all probably this week for your first read next week, uh, if, that, if that works. I, my thought is for Exhibit A to be, could you, can you pull this up? Sure. So that it would be a resolution, Exhibit A would be what Desi's going to, to put up now. And then Exhibit B is, I think we should have a process document that we agree to. Um, between council and the administration, um, the I have kind of three three points that that I think are important for us to agree on. One is that just quarterly update that I think we should come before council publicly on a quarterly basis. Already every quarter we have to report to, to U.S. Treasury, so I think that's a nice natural cadence. We can of course come any time, but commit to a quarterly public update. Um, and then two, the procurement is going to be the same as it always would. You know, this this is federal money, just like the HUD funds. We would we'll have to you know we'll put out for for bid any work that we do, and then we'll bring um, those contracts to council. So even within those months before the next quarterly update, you all will be seeing you know contracts for the work that that we're looking to do. And then the third would be on the NOFAs. Um, we will present just like we do with the action plan. You, you we put the action, uh, HUD action plan through council, then we go out and do the awards, and then we come back um, to council and sh you know, show you what who got those awards. We would do the same with these in the same way that we did the CARES Act as well as we did the the business grants. We awarded those. We came back to council with a list so that you could see where those were awarded. So, but I'm happy to discuss if there's other points that we should. Lay out this, this for piece the here, page one of two, is Exhibit A. In this, so th yeah. So this this would be Exhibit A that shows the the buckets and the our proposed allocation, which are estimates. I mean, the the top line 1.0, 2.0, those top line buckets are they're not fixed in that there there could be changes, but we feel comfortable with those those that percentage um, of the total for those categories where you see on the, f the far right the actual cost that's where we are confident that those those are the dollar amounts that we want to put out there so you'll see going through it that things that are in that notice of funding um, you know a million dollars for uh, nonprofit grants if, if you all agree to it, we feel confident we can get those out on the street and have, and have those awarded. That's a very different situation than what you see doesn't have a cost attached to it, which would be our streetscapes. We, the streetscapes were not ready to have a specific dollar amount allocated for, for a couple of reasons. One, we've applied for grants for a lot of those, so we don't know if we got those grants or not. Whether or not we get the grants will determine the path forward. Also, with
the costs of construction materials and, and labor and any really anything right now, it's really tough for us to estimate what we'll be able to do. So the, the actual cost on that right-hand side is where we feel we can, we can move forward. Um, also, if you look down, you know, uh, kind of towards the end of the, the Meadowbrook, you know, Meadowbrook culvert repair, we know that's 127500 That's already a cost we're aware of. Um, but some of those, the broader pieces, especially with, with stormwater, you know, we don't have costs for those yet. Um, that'll, that's definitely a work in progress and somewhere where we want to, we want to make sure that we're not doing something now that's twice the price as it would be a year from now. Did I miss anything? So go back to what you were saying about Exhibit A and Exhibit B. So and then page two of two would be Exhibit B. So we're saying we would. Nope, two, that's just a continuation. Okay. Um, the Exhibit B just doesn't exist yet. Exhibit B would be, I, my, my proposal is that Exhibit B would be a, a process, just kind of a one page memo where we, we commit to each other to, this partic to a particular process. Just so it's it's clear for all of us and clear for the public that we're, you know, following the all the usual procurement requirements that will come to you with those quarterly updates, that will you know give you a list of the, the folks we awarded funding to um, after those after or as those programs go on. So something similar to Exhibit A would be put in front of council to be passed and agreed upon, and then you would come back to us with who was awarded. Yeah, which with just like this, just like the CARES, those small business grants with the CARES Act, where you you guys uh, approved that we did those grants, and then we came back to you. There were a couple different rounds, I think, mm -hmm. a couple different rounds of awards. And how that was set up, where it was here's the one lump sum that's going towards this, but they're going to be broken up into a ten thousand dollar grant, something like that. Right. So we'll we'll come back to you with a list. A list of the people that we awarded those. But we'll also get how that, those projects will be, you know, or how those grants will be distributed in terms of the. Uh, oh, the, like the the funding rules and. Yes. Oh right, and that's yes. a, that's a good point. Um, because also we'll want you all to announce that this funding is available, so we we will be looking for this body to be making sure that the public is well aware of the funding availability. So, right that. Those, those rules and opportunities will come before you. And that'll be something we'll post on the website as well. Yes. That, that was something that I was going to mention. I know something that we had spoken about in our, our meeting last week, Ms. Cipriani. Uh, for, uh, for the website and for the public to be able to view, I think it would be helpful to have our spending up there and um, you know where we are at with each of these projects, if something's in progress or completed. Um, I think that will be will be great for everyone to see to know where we're at with with the dollars so I think something like that the rules of of this money is one thing I mean the process is a separate piece would you say so what was the process that we used looking at that cares act money is it going to be the same process a similar process essentially, yeah essentially I mean it's just, it's it's basically the process that we do for everything I just I I want to make sure that it's clear and that we've documented that these things are that we're running all of this as we would any, it's different, it's, it's federal funding coming to us in a different way. It's not our general fund budget, but I, I just want it to be clear that we're going to run it in the same manner. So in other words, as contracts are awarded throughout this process, they'll all come before us for approval right. and just as they go would from usually, there. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. And the, the website piece, so answer, you have a, you have some of the infrastructure, the templates and things for the communications pieces, yep, right? We do. right. Yep. And, and the idea would be to build out sort of, as you're talking about, Dr. Rachel, sort of like a dashboard on OpenGov. And OpenGov has those, uh, the ability to do that already. Um, we've been working with Neighborly. Neighborly is the software that we use for our HUD products. So we're going to use that as the area to receive the applications. So they'll, they'll be able to come in through there and be tracked through there. It's a, it's a really, uh, that's how we bring in our CDBG home and ESG applications now. So when we're looking at this actual cost, this is cost that currently we already know. Well, like you, you mentioned the 120. Cost is probably the, 
applies to some of those others is just our program allocation so Meadowbrook culvert is a cost we know that that's a so you say yeah the 127.5 is the cost of what it is now, right what, is, what does that include but, hmm? what what does that include on the meadowbrook culvert that's yeah. the that's the repair of the that's garage the repair of the culvert the garage the culvert the, 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 remember we demolished the garage yeah so we have so this is the garage and the in the cleaning of of the culvert the and the repair of that. And, uh, stabilizing of the, the culvert the uh, soil over it and grass and which is different than the full project this one, if you recall, was it was bid out early on as emergency bid, so we actually have a, a number from the vendor. That's how we know that number. Yeah. So that's an actual cost, um, more a, a project allocation, um, an actual project allocation would be, um, you know, under education, if we, we, we want to and we're proposing to you all through this legislation, we'll put up a half a million dollars for affordable child care, $100,000 for community health um, two hundred fifty thousand dollars for financial literacy, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for educational catch-up. Those are those are actual dollar amounts that we propose. We allocate to those pieces. We would then, in turn, create the rules around a, a notice of funding available, put that out, and hope that we get you know great applications of organizations in our community that want to want to help with those you know, take not help but take those things on and run them. Um, we're not we're not trying to to run a child care here at City Hall that would be great but we're not there <laughs> does anyone else have any questions okay. thank you so much for coming in I really appreciate us. it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a 60 second break and then we'll come back for our 6.30 meeting.